Spurred by rumors on WhatsApp, five men are lynched in Dhule, Maharashtra, and two in Chennai are beaten on suspicion of being child kidnappers. We look at how artificial intelligence is providing frighteningly sophisticated fake news tools. The Supreme Court issues a notice to the Adityanath government on a petition alleging 58 fake encounter killings. The Human Rights Commission says there's complicity by higher-ups. And missing for the last 10 days, the teenage boys' football team stuck inside the Tham Long Cave in Thailand has been found after a multinational search effort. It's an extraordinary story of hope and survival. It's Tuesday, July 3rd. The mob lynching of five people in Maharashtra's Dhule district on suspicion of being child lifters is only the latest in a spate of such killings across the country. While the specifics of each case differ and not every incident is a spontaneous expression of mob anger, one common thread is the dangerous use of social media to spread canards and fear. And the spread of falsehood and fake news could potentially get worse, powered by artificial intelligence. You may have heard of deep fakes. What is a deep fake? The old dictum, seeing is believing, no longer holds good. Deep fake, simply put, is an artificial intelligence or AI based face swapping or image synthesis technique. Basically, digital manipulation of sound, images or video to make it appear that a person said or did something when they didn't, in a frighteningly believable way. Last year, University of Washington researchers developed new algorithms and successfully generated a highly realistic video of former President Barack Obama It's been less than a week since the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Talking about terrorism, fatherhood, job creation and other topics using audio clips of those speeches and existing weekly video addresses that were originally on a different topic. Earlier this year, an Irish company in partnership with the Times newspaper used machine learning and artificial intelligence techniques to reconstruct John F. Kennedy's speech that he was to deliver on the day of his assassination. In a world of complex and continuing problems, in a world full of frustrations and irritations. Let's get to the troubling part of this. Where did deepfakes first surface? In December last year, an anonymous Reddit user who went by the name Deepfakes posted realistic-looking pornographic videos of celebrities like actor Gal Gadot. Then came the free app, Fake App, which has been downloaded more than one lakh times. Fake App uses neural networking tools that were developed by Google's Artificial Intelligence Division and released to the public in 2015. The software teaches itself to perform image recognition tasks through trial and error. But haven't we been seeing this at play with computer-generated imagery in movies? Sure, but the use of CGI is super expensive and laborious and used by big movie productions. We are talking about using a home computer and a free app here. What is the potential impact? We already know the ease with which photoshopped images with fake quotes become viral, exploiting the reach of social media and aided by our confirmation bias. Confirmation bias refers to the tendency to look for or interpret information in a way that confirms one's existing beliefs and ideas. So this new tool could do worse, further eroding trust. This chunao me akali dal ko vote mat dena. This chunao me BJP ko vote mat dena. Sare milke Congress ko vote dena. Ye Congress aur akali dal milke mere naam se ek jhootha video chala rahe hain. Usme ye dikha rahe hain jaise mere purane video jitne the usme unhone kaat kaat ke thoda idhar add kiya, thoda udhar add kiya. Aur ye dikha rahe hain jaise ki main appeal kar raha hu ki Congress ko vote do. Another slippery slope could be that people start disbelieving uncomfortable facts, believing them to be falsely generated. So are deep fakes being generated in India? Deep fakes of female celebrities have already been flagged earlier this year. Net Net, 
Remember the 1997 black comedy Wag the Dog, where a Hollywood producer creates a fake war in Albania to distract voters' attention from a sex scandal involving the US president? We can't afford a war. We're gonna have the appearance of a war. Well, suffice to say, you wouldn't need a Hollywood producer to orchestrate a cover-up or create a false narrative or to weaponize a lie. You want me to produce your war? In an extraordinary story of survival, 12 boys of a Thai football team who went missing in a cave in northern Thailand with their 25-year-old coach have been found after nine days of relentless searching. Popular with tourists, the Tham Luang Caves start high and broad but soon contract into a vast network of narrow, low-ceiling passageways. The boys had explored the caves before, but this time they were inside when it began to rain and water rushed into the cave's pathways. 840 soldiers, 90 members of a special forces unit, four helicopters, teams from the US, China, Australia, and British underwater cave experts searched with a battalion of excavators and relief equipment. Thai Navy SEALs swarm five kilometers into the pitch black passageways but had returned without a clue. Till finally the boys were found alive yesterday at an outlet near Pattaya Beach. And it seems impossible. The caves were flooded. Oxygen levels may have been dangerously low with the flow of air into the cave being blocked by rising water and the boys many feared could have starved to death. Relatives and parents had almost lost hope, but their prayers have been answered. The Supreme Court on Monday issued a notice to the Uttar Pradesh government on a petition alleging that several fake encounters or extrajudicial killings have taken place in the state in the recent past. 58 people have been killed in as many as 500 encounters in Uttar Pradesh in recent years, as per the petitioner. In February, the National Human Rights Commission issued a notice to the Yogi Adityanath government accusing higher-ups in the state administration of allowing the police to freely misuse their power and settle scores with people. Watch the space for more. A cluster of 200-odd South Mumbai buildings have received the UNESCO Heritage Tag because of their distinct Art Deco and Victorian Gothic styles. But what do these terms mean? Let's start with Oval Medan, which hasn't just seen cricket face-offs. The circular field at the heart of South Mumbai has witnessed another, more historical kind. The dialogue between two classic architectural styles, which are both spectacular, one representing 19th century uh, Victorian Gothic, and the other reflecting 20th century early modernism, which came to Bombay. That's conservation architect and founder of NGO Art Deco, Atul Kumar. Kumar and his team of five have been tirelessly cataloging Mumbai's Art Deco heritage. On the east of Oval Medan, you have the grand Victorian Gothic style. Huge stone structures with intricate stonework, high ceilings, pointed windows, arches, stubby column spires and steep roofs. On the other side, there's Art Deco. Colourful geometric buildings with contemporary relief ornamentation, balconies with ship textile railings, pothole windows, cantilevers and stylized grills. We realise that the Art Deco landscape is spread across the length and breadth of the city. It's beyond the government buildings. They're yeah. very much part of public space. The style first appeared in the 1920s after one of the first phases of land reclamation. It was the rise of modern apartment living, a new style of land use on rectangular plots. But Art Deco remained ignored in the face of Gothic architecture. Ironically, it's the blend of both that UNESCO has recognized, calling it some of the most remarkable built-up area in the world, a confluence of culture and history still alive and in use. The stretch also contains the unclassifiable Watson Hotel, India's oldest surviving cast-iron building, once Mumbai's finest hotel. 
our Mumbai buildings competed with structures across the world and have now earned legal protection and finances if needed for conservation. The recognition gives India its 37th World Heritage Site and are the result of the efforts of this team, led by conservation architect Abba Narayan Lamba, who put together a 1,500-page dossier on the buildings that made Mumbai one brick at a time. So, what style is your apartment designed in? Think about it and join us back here tomorrow.